Hey there once again YouTube, how you guys doing today? So, I have a, just a couple things to bring to you real quick. The world is somewhat calm seismically recently, except we did have something very interesting occur last night in north central Peru, struck under the Amazon jungle. We had a magnitude 8.0 at 109.9 kilometers in depth. Now on my Facebook post last night, because it occurred in the middle of the night, for their local time in Peru, I believe it was 3 or 4 in the morning, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, 3 or 4 in the morning last night. For me, I think it was 1 a.m. or something like that. I saw it, I saw it pop up pretty, pretty much right away because I was monitoring the earthquake stuff right when the magnitude 8.0 hit. It, pretty strong, guys. Pretty strong 8.0. Uh, let's go see. So again, I said it was 115 kilometers in depth. That has been revised to 109.9 kilometers in depth. Highly doubtful that any tsunami would occur. This earthquake struck under land, far inland, and it was pretty deep. So I highly doubt any type of uh, tsunami would have occurred at all with this earthquake. But then again, you never know. So real quick, here's the event page for the magnitude 8.0 in Peru last night. Yeah, a lot of people felt it. Uh, let's see, 1,617 people reported to USGS feeling this event, but not everybody in Peru and South America, not a lot of people down there report to USGS. So that's a pretty high count. There's the moment tensor. It looks like a normal tectonic event, of course. It was pretty deep. That's why it was felt over a much broader region than if it was more shallow. I'm actually glad it was a lot more deep than usual. Let's say it was at 30 kilometers in depth. This would have been a very, very devastating magnitude 8.0 earthquake. It would have been very bad. But thank God it was 109.9 kilometers in depth. Depth, excuse me. So fatalities and damage should be minimal. And from what I've heard, only one person died from this earthquake. That's it. Just one person from a magnitude 8.0. And I believe that all has to do with the depth. So... But there were some buildings that did collapse, and this says liquefaction, extensive area affected, and significant population exposed for liquefaction, and barely any chance of a landslide. But liquefaction apparently did occur. That's what USGS is saying. Here's the tectonic summary from USGS. The May 26, 2019, magnitude 8.0 northern Peru earthquake occurred. <clears throat> Excuse me. As the result of normal faulting at an intermediate depth, approximately 110 kilometers beneath the Earth's surface, within the subducted lithosphere of the Nazca Plate. Focal mechanism solutions indicate that the rupture occurred on either a north or south striking, moderately dipping normal fault. At the location of this earthquake, the Nazca Plate moves to the east relative to the South American Plate at a velocity of about 70 millimeters per year, subducting at the Peru-Chile Trench, excuse me, to the west of the Peruvian coast, and the May 26th earthquake. Earthquakes of northern Peru and most of western South America are due to strains generated by this ongoing subduction process. Yes, that is true. At this latitude, the Nazca Plate is seismically active to depths at about 650 kilometers in depth. That is very deep. This earthquake occurred in a segment of the subducted plate that has produced frequent earthquakes with focal depths from 100 to 150 kilometers. Earthquakes like this event, with focal depths between 70 and 30, 300 kilometers, are commonly termed intermediate depth earthquakes. Intermediate depth earthquakes represent deformation within subducted slabs rather than at the shallow plate interface between subducting and overriding tectonic plates. They typically cause less damage on the ground surface of other foci than is the case with similar magnitude shallow focus events. Yes, we know that. But large intermediate depth earthquakes will be felt a great distance away from the epicenter, much much more of a distance, guys, than just shallow earthquakes. <clears throat> now, while commonly plotted as pinpoints on a map, earthquakes of this size are more appropriately described as slip over a large fault area. You know how they always pinpoint them as dots? Well, th that's really not accurate, guys. That's really, really not accurate. They, it's more of like an oblong shape over hundreds of kilometers, right? When it's an earthquake this large. Normal events of the size of the May 26, 2018 magnitude 8 are typically about 180 by 50 kilometers in length and width. Now, large intermediate depth earthquakes are reasonably common in this section of the Nazca slab and three un other intermediate depth magnitude 7 plus events. Why didn't they say magnitude 8? I'll tell you that in just a second. Magnitude 7 plus events have occurred within 250 kilometers of the September 26th earthquake over the past three decades. Yeah, they actually do get a lot of earthquakes down there, guys. A lot of large earthquakes. Us up here in the United States, we are so freaking lucky, guys. Really. 
You know how they say uh, for Cascadia Subduction Zone, oh, every 400 to 500 years, a major magnitude 9 occurs. Every once in a while, magnitude 6. Well, if we were down in South America, they'd say, yeah, you guys get an 8.0 to 9.0. I'm going to say probably every two years or so. <laughs> I mean, it pretty much seems like that. I'll show you the data in just a second. But again, uh, magnitude 7.5 in September 2005 located at a similar depth, but approximately 130 kilometers to the west of the May 26, 2019 earthquake caused five deaths and 70 inju injuries and significant damage in the surrounding region. This was larger. A little bit deeper, I believe. Let's see, what did it say? The depth. It did not say the depth, did it? And look at it at a similar depth. Okay, so we will take a look at that in just a second. Again, very large earthquake striking Peru last night around 1 in the morning Pacific time. I believe 3 or 4 in the morning, their time. So here we have reported earthquakes for Peru and the Ecuador region in South America. Ever since January 1st, 1900 to right now, May 26th. 2019. So we see the first one ever reported was in 1906 on January 31st, and it was an 8.8 .8 at 20 kilometers in depth. Yes, they could construe depths um, pretty good. They could constrain depths pretty good back then, guys. Yes, seismology's been around for a while, but it's been gaining momentum the past few decades. It's getting a lot better. And then we have a pretty deep 7.9 in 1922 right up here. But for this region in Peru, in this region in Peru, we really only see two earthquakes, and that's it, basically. 7.5 at 115 kilometers in depth on September uh, bleh, 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 excuse me on September 26, 2005. And then skip forward to today, we have the magnitude 8.0 at 109.9 kilometers in depth. Again, let's. I'm going to check the Did You Feel It reports. Let's go to. Where is it? Let's go, did you feel it? Okay, so let's see which one is the strongest. It looks like the magnitude 8 in 2007 all the way down here seems to be just as strong as the magnitude 7.8 in 2016, which occurred all the way up here, and the magnitude 8 today. It looks like the shake report is the same. They don't really have reports for all those. But again, Looks like we got the most responses uh, for any other earthquake to occur in this region. Pretty crazy, guys. So these large magnitude, somewhat deep earthquakes do occur in this area. They do occur every now and then. But for this area of Peru, central Peru, they really do not occur that often. They usually occur right here and also here and even a lot of other areas of South America. I mean, South America gets slammed, guys. They get slammed all the time. Again, last night was a magnitude 8.0 at 109.9 kilometers in depth. Let's take a really quick look at a station from Bolivia and see what the earthquake looked like. And just real quick, going to the Yellowstone Web Recorder page, we do see the magnitude 8.0 did show up very, very strong on the seismic stations in Yellowstone. Look at that. Yeah, very strong, guys. Very strong. Let's go to YDD, showing the lower frequencies because this is originally a broadband station remember SHZ is not a real channel in the WY network they have no SHZ channels the real channels they don't have any of those but they have HHZ uh, EHZ but whenever you see SHZ that means they took one of their HHZ stations and slapped it with an SHZ sticker and did a one Hertz high pass filter I don't know why they don't just say the real channel and just say hey we did one Hertz high pass I don't know why they don't do that, but maybe someday they will. You never know. But again, we do see actually a few quakes did strike. We got two quakes near Maple Creek, I believe. Let's see. I believe they occurred closest to Maple Creek. I don't know for sure. I'll check on that in just a minute. And then two other earthquakes later on after the magnitude 8.0 in Peru. But let's take a look at the seismic data for the 8.0 in Peru. Now, here's the data to a station from Bolivia, just to the south southeast of the epicenter probably a few hundred kilometers but we're still going to get a good look at this magnitude 8 since it was so strong i do not have a filter set yet so what you've seen here is some really low frequencies guys some very 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 low frequencies i'm going to zoom all the way out all the way out let's see how long this puppy dog lasted oh man this was a strong quake guys very very strong let's go to the spectrogram yeah, shaking would have lasted multiple, multiple minutes. Oh, yes. Let's keep moving forward. Look at the surface waves, guys. Man, lasted a long... You can even see it on the webicorder, or the helicorder, excuse me. Look at that. 
even well after, even all the way down to the most recent data stream. Notice how straight these lines look. Now go all the way down. They are still a little bit wavy down at the bottom. That is still from the surface waves from this earthquake. Can you imagine that? Look at that. There it is up here before the earthquake, and here it is after. We So what is that? Let's see, I'm going to say... 748 UTC, right? 748 UTC to 19. So pretty much the that's this area in South America has been shaking. I mean, most uh, you'd only feel a few minutes of the shaking. But uh, the very, very low frequency rhythms and the shaking of the ground has been occurring for over 10 hours, guys. 10 hours. Isn't that crazy? Look, there's before and here's after. Most recent data stream as of 1.06 p.m. Pacific time, May 26, 2019. Here's before and here's after. Again, I have no frequency filter set and after. So these are very, very low frequencies, guys. Very low frequencies. So nobody would be able to feel these at all. But still, they are occurring. Very shocked as to how long these surface waves last. lasted. Excuse me. Very weird. Very weird. Again, magnitude 8 in Peru that occurred last night. I'm going to add a frequency filter just real quick, a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power. There we go. Looks like we actually had a few aftershocks right here. Not too many though. I'm not seeing too many aftershocks. I do Actually, I don't know. I don't know if that's an aftershock. That's weird. It's very emergent. Huh. That is kind of strange actually. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know why it would look like that. Okay. Oh well. Oh, uh oh, 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 oh. What is going on? This program's glitching, guys. No! Okay, there we go. All right, so it looks like right before the magnitude 8 occurred, we did have two earthquakes. Three, actually. There's one right there. Very small, though. Very small earthquakes. They could be from another location, though. They could be from another location. There's this emergent event in the middle, though. Almost looks like a low-frequency earthquake. Look at that. Could be another teleseism, though. But it is interesting to note that it occurred pretty much right before the magnitude 8 occurred. So, that's very interesting. And here's what the magnitude 8 looks like with a 1 hertz high-pass filter from this station in Bolivia. Only one person died, guys. As we can see, some posts on Twitter. U.S. Geological Survey reports magnitude 8. Magnitude 8 struck a remote part of the Amazon jungle in Peru early Sunday, collapsing buildings and knocking out power to some areas, but causing only one death. Thank God it was only one death. I wish it would have been zero, but with the Magnitude 8, only one death, that is, that's what, that's really good, guys. I mean, there could have been a lot more deaths. There could have been way more if this earthquake was, was uh, much more shallow, but this earthquake was deeper. That is why... Not that many people died. Thank God. At least one person died. Several others were injured after 8.0 uh, from CNN. <laughs> the Clinton News Network. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, by the way, apparently they used to be like number two or number three. You know they're number seven now? Nickelodeon gets more views than CNN now. Yeah. Yeah. I, even if I don't care what your political beliefs are, I really don't care what mine are. <laughs> but the thing is is that really shows you something that really shows you something i don't know why they're going downhill so much actually i kind of do know why but i don't think i could talk about it much otherwise i'll get my videos taken off youtube <laughs> monday's news brief let's see protecting humanity in the face a uh, huge earthquake rocks peru our weekly catch up with sign blah 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 earthquake alert indonesia apparently there's an earthquake in indonesia too Jeez. so let's go to the earthquake map just real quick let's do go up Let's do auto update one day all magnitudes. Now let's see what has recently struck, shall we? So we just looked at, at that 8.0 in Peru, which is basically just what I wanted to talk about today. Um, going up, looks like there was a small earthquake in Washington State at 1.0, 2.8 kilometers in depth in eastern Washington. We had a quake in Oklahoma, a small one, and then we also had another quake, I believe, just east of the New Madrid. I believe the New Madrid is right here, just east of that. 2.1 and 28.3 kilometers in depth in Tennessee. Zoom to the world. So basically, the magnitude 8 was the largest event, of course. Of course, largest event in the past 24 hours and even the past few weeks. There's a 4.0 along the Cascadia subduction. Actually, I do not think it's on the subduction zone. I believe that's on the Blanco fracture zone. 
And I tried looking at the data for that. I could not find it in the seismic data. It was very weird. It was non-existent. Very, I even used some very sophisticated frequency filters. Could not find it. So I don't know. That one's up in the air. Down in Hawaii, we only have six earthquakes. That's it. Let's see. Any any spasmodic tremor, which I used to call DOPHFEs. Looks like we did have possibly one spasmodic tremor event. At about 123 UTC on the 26th. Let's go here. I'm going to refresh the page just to take a look and see. Come on, buddy. That's not what I want to do. Come on. Bear with me, guys. Oh, man. Come on. There we go. Okay, so let's go to PPLD just real fast, which is usually the closest seismic station to the spasmodic tremor events. Past 12 hours, we do see one right here. Most likely, most likely, we'll take a look at PLAD right now. Let's go to PLAD for the past 12 hours. No. Huh. Huh. That's very interesting. Back to monitoring station past 24 hours. That is very weird. Maybe it wasn't a spasmodic tremor. Maybe it was just an earthquake. Let's see. That was the 26th uh, at about 9 to 9.30. 26th about 9 to 9.30. Let's see. 9 to 9.30. Nope. I'm not seeing anything. Maybe it was just an earthquake. Interesting. So we have not really seen spasmodic tremor much at all for the past day or two. For Hawaii, which I think is very interesting, but I, I do believe we're going to see quite a resurgence in those very soon. Again, I showed in the other video not too long ago that uplift is kind of starting to calm down in the Lower East Rift Zone, but it still continues for Mauna Loa and Mauna Loa's uh, summit right here. But most of the seismicity occurs at the summit and southwest region right here, the southwest rift zone. Not really seeing much all the way up here. Basically, it's just all the way down here. So I don't know where that's headed. Keep an eye out, guys. I just woke up just a little while ago, so forgive me if I'm a little groggy or foggy or whatever. So, again, magnitude 8.0 in Peru. I will be back on later on. Keep an eye out for new posts on my website if something does occur. Keep an eye out for more earthquakes. Again, so, some people did say this could be a possible foreshock for a coming earthquake. Uh, you know, that is possible. But I have to disagree with that. I have to disagree with that because really, when four shocks are leading up to like a magnitude 9 or like a magnitude 8.5, usually they start around magnitude 4, magnitude 5, and then slowly get up to magnitude 6, magnitude 7, and then boom, we see the magnitude 9. That's usually what happens. That's what happened in Japan. They had a bunch of four shocks before their magnitude 9, and it didn't relieve any pressure. People think a lot of earthquakes occurring can relieve pressure. And yes, that is true. That can happen. But also, that could mean that pressure is building even more. So really, it could go either way, guys. It could go either way. But I do not believe another large earthquake is coming for Peru for a little while. That is what I believe. I do not believe one's coming. But be prepared just in case. You never know. It's a crazy world that we live in, guys. You never know. One of these days, we're going to see multiple eights striking all around the world. You never know. It's crazy stuff happens, guys. And it does seem like the world is destabilizing, just like the minds of society. <laughs> God bless, guys. You have a great day. I'll be back on later. See you later.